Streamer Bot just dropped its biggest update ever. And if you've been struggling to set it up and automate your stream, then this changes everything. The old Streamer Bot was powerful but complicated. This new one, it's a game changer. Just look at it. It's dark mode now. And that only scratches the surface. In this new ultimate guide to Streamer Bot, I'm going to show you how it all works setup, integrations, and then my favorite new feature, including one feature buried in this update that has changed everything for me. If you're new here, my name is Barry Epps. I'm a cryptographer turned content creator, and I'm here to help you grow your channel the right way. If you are brand new to streamer.bot, then make sure to grab it from the website and extract it somewhere you can easily find it. Head into the folder and find the executable and make a shortcut to your desktop to make it an easy launch. And if you you're a long time user of the not good looking version, then head into file and update and update it to 1.0.0 or higher. With Streamerbot installed, we are now going to connect it to the streaming platforms of your choice, Twitch, YouTube, and even Kick. We will start with Twitch as that is the easiest one. Open up the platforms tab and open up the Twitch tab. Click login with the broadcaster account and then you are done. If you have a custom bot account, then you can log into your bot account here too, and StreamerBot will automatically use that one when it sends messages. If connecting to Twitch is all you want to do, I will leave a timestamp in the description below so you can continue to connecting your OBS. For YouTube, however, it is very similar. Read the terms and privacy policy and then accept. Then do the exact same as with Twitch. Log into your broadcaster account and if you have a custom bot, your bot account and that's that. Finally, to connect to Kick, there's two steps as Kick doesn't have an easily accessible API. First, go to the integrations tab and open the streamer bot website login. Log into the website and once you've connected that to your streamer bot, you can now link your Kick account through the website. This allows streamer bot to get all the triggers that you need from the Kick API. Then we need to make sure that your streamer bot is linked to your Kick account as well. I know this feels really double, but Open the platforms tab again and head into the kick tab. The rest goes exactly the same as with Twitch and YouTube. One of the massively updated features since the last video I made is the streamer bot chat, which allows you to see all your chats in one box so you don't have to keep track of multiple windows. And it is now much easier to be integrated into your OBS. To add the chat, open your custom browser docs and give it a name. Then add this link for your chat. And if you want to see your activity feed for all platforms in one place too, then use this link. I will leave those both in the description below as well. And while you're down there, make sure to like the video. In StreamerBot, head into the servers and client section and open the WebSocket server. Toggle on auto start. And if you want to be able to use your chat to talk, enable authentication too. Set a password and start the server. Back in OBS, you can now add the password into the setup and click connect to finish up the setup. And you have all three chats, Twitch, YouTube and Kick all in one screen. With your streaming platforms connected, it is time to connect StreamerBot to your OBS. Otherwise, you miss out one of the strongest features that StreamerBot can do. Luckily, they've made this easier than ever. Open your OBS, head into the tools menu and open the WebSocket server settings. Enable the WebSocket server and then check the connect info. Don't show this on your stream, by the way. Now head to StreamerBot and open the stream apps. Open OBS and right click anywhere in the screen to add an OBS instance. Give it a name and then just copy the host, port and password here from the connect info. Toggle the auto connect on startup and reconnect on disconnect and click OK. It might take a moment, but it will automatically connect to your OBS, which you can check by checking the OBS information at the right side of your screen. Streamlabs and Meld work in the same way. For Meld, the WebSocket server settings are in the settings, advanced and then allow remote connections. Do the same for Meld as you would for OBS but leave the IP on 127.0.0.1 and it should connect immediately. For Streamlabs, don't use Streamlabs. Okay, moving on. If you use Stream Elements, Pali.gg, Fourth Wall, or one of the other dozen platforms that you can directly integrate, then there are generally two ways to do that. The first way, like with Stream Elements, is the easiest. You just log into your account and you are done. I'm not going to show you for every platform how you do that, but I will leave a link in the description where you can find all the ways to link up and find these keys so you can integrate them easily. There is one exception to all of this, and that is for Elgato. 
for the CamHub Wavelink or Stream Deck software, you need to start a WebSocket server inside StreamerBot. Luckily, they've made that easy for you. Open the Elgato Stream Deck integration, toggle the server to auto start, and then click start server. That's it, you're done. Do this first and then connect your Wavelink and CamHub software. Okay, with your platforms, OBS and integrations all set up, we are done with the boring bit. Time to make some stuff happen. And for that, we need to go to the actions and cues tab. There are three boxes here and each of them have a different meaning. And it kind of works like building a robot that can make hamburgers. If a robot doesn't know what a burger is, you can't just go tell it to make a burger. You need to tell it to make a patty, cook the patty on one side for three minutes, then flip it and cook it on the other side for two minutes. Add the shredded lettuce, add tomatoes, add pickles. Can't have a burger without pickles. And eventually it has made something which we recognize as a burger. But to the robot, it is just what it was programmed to do. StreamerBot is the same. In the actions, you give StreamerBot the instruction to do something. But to tell what it actually has to do, you have to describe it step by step in the sub actions. And there's one other thing you need to do. You need to tell your robot when to make a burger. Or well, you need to tell StreamerBot when it needs to do the action. That is what the triggers are for. So for the shout out command that I've just made, I need to add a new command. And I will show you how to do this in a second. But before we do that, I need to show you the biggest improvement to StreamerBot, the logic functions. Old StreamerBot had practically one logic option, if else. If something was true, it would do an action. And if it was false, it would do something else. They have changed that for this version. When you add an if else command, you can now build the action you want to do directly in the action itself. Because we can now add nested groups and sub actions. You don't want to know how cool this is. Okay, it's super nerdy, but the streamer bot community has been asking for this for months, if not years. Anyway, in addition to that, they've also added two new logic functions. The while sub action does exactly what you'd expect. While the condition you set up is true, it will constantly keep running this loop. Only when it becomes false, will it move out of this loop. While loops are not very useful, but I personally like the other new addition way more. The switch case. When you add this one, you add an input like username, and now you can add a case for every single username that you want to do something with. So say you have streamer friends you always want to give a shout out to. Then you can now add their name as an option and completely tailor the shout out to them. And you can do this for every single person without having to create a separate action for each of them and then checking their username on a case by case basis with if else sub actions like you had to do. Oh, and if you can't find the right sub action or you want to do something completely of your own, such as connection to the Google API for automatic translation or the Spotify API so people can change the music on your channel, then you can do that too. StreamerBot allows you to code whatever you want in C Sharp and there are a load of awesome creators that allow you to create your own plugins for streamer bot, such as the ones you can find on my website, contentdelta.online. Is this a shameless plug? Yes. Yes, it is. But to be fair, there are some really cool things like an updated hype train widget, ad tracking widget, and a TTS bot, and all of that for free. So there really is no reason not to grab them. Okay, let's go back to our burger robot for just a second. Say you order a burger. And two seconds later, I order a burger. Well, the robot would put your burger bun down and then put mine on top of it. Then two servings of lettuce, then two patties, etc., etc. But that's not what either of us ordered. What you want the robot to do is to make your burger first, and then once it's done making your burger, it can start making mine. This can happen with your actions too. But that is where cues come in very handy. For example, you don't want all your alerts to play at the same time. So you can head into your cues and make a new cue called alerts and toggle the blocking feature on. The blocking feature makes sure that it first completes one action of the cue before starting on the next one. Then in your actions, just add all your alerts to that cue by right clicking it and setting the cue to alerts. In addition to all the automatic triggers such as follow, subs, chat, 
chat messages and stuff, you can also make triggers that are controlled by you or your viewers. There are three ways to do this. Commands, channel point redemptions, and hotkeys. Commands allow you or your viewers to send a chat message, and that chat message automatically activates the action you have set to it. The most common way to do this is exclamation point commands, such as exclamation point eight ball or exclamation point shout out. To use this as a trigger, head into the triggers, core, commands, and then commands triggered. Let's make a shout out command, and I will explain on the way. First, give it a name. I will go with shout out. Then we need to decide on the words that can trigger it. Some people will use exclamation point shout out and others will use exclamation point SO. I will add them both on separate lines in the command box and now both of them trigger your action. In the location box, you can select where this command has to be, at the start of the message, anywhere, or at the end. If you go down to the sources menu, you can also choose which messages this command should listen to. Twitch messages, Twitch whispers, YouTube messages, kick messages, the choice is yours. In the cooldowns menu, you can then set two kinds of cooldowns. The global cooldown is how long all your viewers have to wait to use the command again, while the user cooldown is how long a specific viewer has to wait. Since Twitch only allows one shout out per minute, I'll just set the global cooldown to 60 seconds. The final thing we need to look at is the allow and deny list on the right. This allows you to control who can use your commands and who can't. For example, if you allow this your moderators, then only your moderators can use the shoutout command, which can be useful to prevent abuse. If you switch to user permissions, you can also choose a specific person that is allowed to use your command. For example, if you want to give them a personal sound effect that they can trigger. The deny list works the same, but instead of allowing, it denies people from using the command. One of my favorite things though about StreamerBot is that you can manage your channel point redemptions directly in the app without needing to go to Twitch. To add channel point redemptions, you do need access to channel points, which means you need to be a Twitch affiliate. To find them in the trigger menu, find Twitch, channel rewards, reward redemption, and click on create reward to make a new one. In the pop-up box, you can then choose a reward name and give it a description. This is both shown to your viewer so you can explain the reward. After giving it a color, you then have two toggles. User input required means the user gets a little prompt to write a message that goes with the redemption, which can be useful for things like TTS redeems. The redemption skips queue toggle allows, well, it allows the redemption to skip the queue it's in. The cost is the cost in channel points, and the two max lines allow you to restrict how many times this redeem can be used per stream or per user per stream. Persisting the counter globally or per user can be useful for things such as a daily check-in where it can count the amount of times people have checked in in total per person, or if you have some kind of counting redemption, how high people have counted over all your streams. Finally, if you want to use a hotkey, then you can add that from the core input key press function. This has changed from the last one because hotkeys now function exactly like you expect them to. Press the key combination and boom, the action runs. I don't think that needs more of an explanation, kind of self-explanatory. There is one more way to control your actions, and that is with voice control. However, I tried it out on stream, and honestly, it was so terrible at recognizing my voice and accent that I could not get it to recognize a single thing. However, for completeness sake, if you want to set it up, head to the voice settings tab and open up the settings. Turn on auto start listen and start listening. In the locale, choose the language you are speaking, and for the confidence threshold, set it between 40 and 60%. In the audio input capture, choose your microphone and you are done. You can then just add a voice control command in the triggers menu for your actions and that's it. Okay, this video is getting really long, so time for the quick fire feature round. In the services, you can find the timers tab. This forces actions to trigger after a certain amount of lines of text or after a certain amount of time automatically. Add, set the name, interval in seconds and lines, and add that as a trigger to your action. Still in the services tab, there's also a quote system. If you want StreamerBot to remember quotes from your stream, you can make an action to add quotes, remove quotes, 
and get quotes in your sub actions from the core quotes menu. Most popular commands to use for this are exclamation point add quote and exclamation point quote followed by a number to retrieve different quotes. And lastly, if you open Twitch and search for content delta, you will find my channel where I stream every Tuesday and Friday from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. So if you have any questions about streaming, streamer bot, or anything else, join the stream or just hang out with fellow creators. You've now got the new streamer.bot fully set up. Your platform's connected and it's time for you to get creative. And if you feel inspired to make new stuff for your stream, but you don't know what, then check out my streamer bot playlist right here. There's a TTS bot in there your viewers will love. And as always, stream better, stream smart.